Hello everyone and welcome back to the Angular University. In this lesson we're going to talk about the new at4 tracking function. So this track course.id syntax that you see here that wasn't present in the previous version of the looping construct for Angular which was the ng4 directive that we're going to be covering later on in this course. So what is this tracking function all about and why is it mandatory? Remember if you don't add it here you're going to get here a compilation error so this is now mandatory. What is this concept all about and why was it introduced with at4? Well, the tracking function helps Angular and specifically the implementation of the at4 template syntax to optimize the way in which the DOM gets rendered. So remember that the courses list that we are passing here is just a list of plain objects. But at any given moment in your application, this list might change. So Angular will have a previous list that was rendered to the DOM and Angular will then receive a new version of a list that it now needs to use to update the page. Now the way that Angular performs the DOM updates is Angular starts by diffing the two lists, creating a difference list between the previous version and the new version of the data that we are rendering out to the screen. Based on that diffing mechanism, Angular is going to determine exactly what parts of the page need to be updated. So, for example, imagine that you have a list of 10 elements that is already rendered out here to the page. And now Angular receives a new version of the list that is exactly the same data as it had before, but only one new element was appended to the list. So instead of 10 elements, it now has 11. Well, Angular is going to diff the two lists and it's going to determine that only the new element should be rendered and the other ones should remain unchanged. But Angular can really only do that if it can uniquely identify each element. Otherwise, Angular is going to be pretty much forced to re-render the whole list every time that in some applications with large amounts of data can become quite noticeable. So this is why the tracking function is necessary. It helps to uniquely identify each element and it enables Angular to diff two versions of a list efficiently in order to determine how to optimize the page in the most optimal way. Before, with the previous version of at4, the tracking function, although it existed, as we will learn on future sections, it wasn't mandatory. So now with at4, the tracking function has become mandatory and it's mandatory in order to prevent us developers from shooting ourselves in the foot, so to speak. If we forget to add it, if it would not be mandatory, we could run into performance issues in certain applications that could be hard to diagnose. By making the tracking function mandatory, we are sure that every use of at4 in any Angular application will always have a tracking function and we will never run into those accidental performance issues. So in that sense, making the tracking function mandatory is actually safer from a developer experience point of view. But on the other hand, you now have to know what a tracking function is and how to write one if you need one. So here in the particular case of looping through an array of courses, like we see here, we have added this track course.id. This means that the unique identifier of each element on the array is going to be the ID property, which is guaranteed to be unique for each course. Now, we have written the tracking function using this simplified syntax where we didn't have to actually write a function. But in certain situations, it's not that easy, it's not that trivial to write the correct way to track a given object. We might have to combine several properties of the object, for example, to come up with a unique identifier. So in those situations, Angular allows us to write our own tracking function here at the level of the component. So if I go here to this component, let's go ahead and let's write a tracking function for the course entity. 
So I'm going to create here a new function that I'm going to call track course. So this is a member function of this component. The first argument is going to be the index of the element, which is the number. And the second argument is going to be an element of the array for which we are writing a tracking function. Now here, this tracking function should return a unique identifier for this object here, the course object. So in our case, this is going to be the course ID. So we can go ahead and we can return here course ID. And now we can grab here the name of this function. And here in our template, instead of writing track course ID, we can pass in here a reference to the track course function. And at four is now going to be using this function in order to do the tracking here of this list. As you can see, if we reload here the application, we're going to see that everything is working correctly as expected. So this track course function is equivalent to that simplified solution that we had written before, track by course.id. In general, using the simplified notation is preferable, it's more readable, and in most cases, this is all that you will need. But in special cases, in certain occasions, we are really going to need to write our own tracking function, like this function here, track course. And so, in case that you need it, this is how you do it. In general, you should prefer the simplified notation. So I hope that this explains exactly what a tracking function is. This allows Angular to efficiently create the difference between two lists and optimally optimize your page, changing just the parts that really need to be changed. Another example is if the only difference between the two lists is one element was deleted from the list. Well, Angular would not want to re-render all the previous nine elements just to remove an element from the list. So these are just a couple of the easiest to understand optimizations that Angular can do with the tracking function. The bottom line is that this is used to ensure that Angular always updates the page in the most efficient way. So you are probably wondering at this stage, what should we do if we don't have a unique property in the object being looped over? What if it is, for example, a list of strings? Well, in the case of a list of strings, you could use actually track by the string itself. That would work. But in general, if we don't have anything to uniquely identify the data that you are looping over, you can always, as a last resort, use a track by index. And notice that you don't need here to assign dollar $index to another variable and give it a different name. You can use it directly here in the template by referring to it as $index. So here we are tracking by the position of the element in the list. This is not as efficient for Angular as having something to uniquely identify each item on the list, but at least it will solve the compilation error and it will allow you to use the for syntax without any issues. And with this, we have covered everything that you will need to know in practice about at four and about the tracking function. Next, let's cover what other options we have available in terms of control flow for Angular.